summer, Little Miss Magic awoke in her bedroom in Abracadabra Cottage, which is where she lived. She yawned a yawn ah. and got out of bed. She went to the bathroom to brush her teeth. Please, she said to the tube of toothpaste. And guess what? The tube of toothpaste jumped up and squeezed itself onto Little Miss Magic's toothbrush. Honestly, Little Miss Magic isn't called Little Miss Magic for nothing. When she tells something to do something, it does it. She went downstairs to the kitchen for breakfast. Boil. She said to the kettle. And it did. Toast. She said to the toaster. Spread. She said to the knife. And the knife jumped up and spread some butter on the toast. Pour. She said to the coffee pot. Don't you wish you could do things like that? She was enjoying a second cup of coffee when there was a knock on the door. Open, she said to the door. And as it did, there stood Mr. Happy. But he didn't look happy at all. In fact, he looked exactly the opposite. Oh, oh, you look sad. What's the matter? Everything. Come in and tell me about it. Would you like a cup of coffee? Yes, please. Pour, she said to the coffee pot. Sugar. Two, please. Two lumps, jump. Two lumps jumped out of the sugar bowl and plopped into the cup. Stir. And a spoon stirred Mr. Happy's coffee. Now, what is it? Oh, it's Mr. Tickle. He's become absolutely impossible. What do you mean? Well, he used to go around tickling people every now and then. But now he's going around tickling people all the time. Right. Little Miss Magic looked hmm. at him. It can't be that bad. Cheer up. And of course he did. Come on, we'll go and see Mr. Tickle together. She suggested. Open? She said to the door. After you. And off they went from Abracadabra Cottage. Meanwhile, Mr. Tickle was in fine form. What a Monday morning he was having. He tickled Mr. Mean until he moaned. Then he went off and tickled Mr. Greedy until he groaned. He tickled poor little Miss Sunshine until she shivered. He tickled Mr. Quiet until he quivered. He tickled Miss Plump until she pleaded. And little Miss Shy until she sobbed. Not to mention the mail. A policeman, the doctor, three dogs, Two cats and a woman. <laughs> Cried Mr. Tickle as he spied Little Miss Magic and Mr. Happy. Anyone for Tickles? And he rushed up to them, reaching out those extraordinarily long arms of his with those particularly ticklish fingers on the end of them. Little Miss Magic oh. looked at Mr. Happy. Yes, I see what you mean. And winked. She pointed at Mr. Tickle's extraordinarily long right arm. Shrink, she said. And then she pointed at Mr. Tickle's extraordinarily long left arm. Shrink. And as you remember, when Little Miss Magic tells something to do something, it does it. Mr. Tickle's arms were suddenly not extraordinarily long. They were extra extraordinarily ordinary. Hey, that's not fair. You've got to spoil all my fun. It might have been fun for you, <laughs> but it wasn't much fun for anyone else. Come and see me tomorrow, said Little Miss Magic to Mr. Tickle. There. She smiled. Happy now? Mr. Happy smiled that famous happy smile of his. I'll say I am. Come on and I'll buy you an ice cream cone. And off they went to find some ice cream. Ice cream, said Miss Magic happily. Yes, mm, we'll have two raspberry ripples, said Mr. Happy laughing. On Tuesday, Mr. Tickle went over to Abracadabra Cottage. He knocked at the door. Open? And of course, the door opened oh. by itself. Hello, Mr. Tickle. Come in. I expect you'd like me to make your arms long again. Oh, yes, please. Very well. <laughs> Mr. Tickle's face lit up. On one condition. Oh? His face mm. fell. You will be allowed only one tickle a day. Uh, hmm. Yes? Only one tickle? Promise. Uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, 
I promise. Go! And both Mr. Tickle's arms grew back to their original length. Now don't forget, one tickle a day. Or else. Um. Mr. Tickle went out through the door. Goodbye. She said to him. Now shut. And of course, it did. Mr. Tickle stood outside of Little Miss Magic's cottage. Oh, well. <laughs> I guess one tickle a day is better than no tickle a day. He thought. It was then that he saw one of the downstairs windows of Abracadabra Cottage was open. <laughs> one tickle a day. And a small smile came to his face. One tickle a day. And on that Tuesday morning, as one of those extraordinarily long arms reached in through the open window of Abracadabra Cottage, the small smile on the face of Mr. Tickle turned into a giant grin. <laughs> one tickle a day. <laughs> Good 
heavens, man, whatever happened to you? Mr. Small told the doctor the whole story. Oh, I think something should be done about that little lady. What she needs is, um, uh, 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 <laughs> yes, that's it. Uh, what is it? asked Mr. Small. Dr. Makewell whispered something in Mr. Small's ear. Would you like to know what he whispered? Well, I'm not telling you, because it's a secret. That afternoon, Mr. Small went to see Mr. Tickle. Hey! Do you know what Miss Trouble calls you behind your back? Hmm, no. What does Miss Trouble call me behind my back? Mr. Small paused for a moment. Pudding face! What? Pudding face! Then Mr. Small went over to Mr. Bump's house. Oh, Mr. Bump! Hmm, hello. You know what Miss Trouble calls you behind your back? No. What does Miss Trevor call me behind my back? Mr. Nitwit. What? Mr. Nitwit. Well, now, little Miss Trouble yeah. herself was in trouble. How dare you call me pudding day? Said Mr. Yeah. Tickle angrily. And he tickled her. <laughs> and how dare you call me a nitwit? Said Mr. Bump. And he bumped her. Now, I don't know whether you've ever been tickled and bumped at the same time, but it's not much fun. In fact, it's no fun at all. Tickle bump. Tickle bump. Tickle bump. Tickle bump. Tickle bump. Bump bump. It went on for ten minutes. And ten minutes of tickle bumping is a long time. I can tell you that. Later that evening, Dr. Makewell strolled around to see how Mr. Small was doing. Hello there, Mr. Small. How is your foot? Mm, oh, much better now, thank you. And did our little plan work? It did indeed, yes. <laughs> Shake, said Dr. Makewell. And they shook hands. Well, not quite hands. Dr. Makewell then strolled round to see Miss Trouble. She was feeling very, very sorry for herself. Well, now... So what's the matter with you? And she told him all about it. All about everything. Oh, Mr. Small went around and told Mr. Tickle that I called him Pudding Face, and I didn't. Then Mr. Small told Mr. Bump that I called him Nitwit, and I didn't. And then Mr. Tickle and Mr. Bump came to me and went Tickle Bump, Tickle Bump, Tickle Bump. Oh, now just cheer up. You know what you've just had, don't you? Little Miss Trouble shook her head. No, what? A taste of your own medicine. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes in sunshine, sometimes in style. Sometimes with no time or just with a smile. Up to her eyes in surprises and tricks. was one of those people who just love to help other people. Now stay for help now. You know what I mean? I mean, for instance, like the time when one of Mr. Tall's shoelaces came undone. Now, if you're as tall as Mr. Tall, tying your shoelaces isn't the easiest thing in the world, as uh, you can imagine. Let me help you, said little Miss Helpful, rushing up to where Mr. Tall stood, looking down at his shoelaces. But somehow she managed to tie Mr. Tall's shoelaces together. And then he teetered. Hey. And then he tottered. And then Mr. Tall fell right over. And if you're tall as Mr. Tall, falling over hurts. Oh, hey. Oh, my poor head. Hey there, let me help you. And she tried unsuccessfully to lift Mr. Tall again. Come on, up you go. Oh, up you go. Little Miss Helpful puffed and struggled. Then she had an idea. You're too tall. Don't go way up right back. And off she went to find the wizard. 
He wasn't home, but looking through the window, she could see his book of spells on the table. She crept into the house and turned over the pages until she found the spell she was looking for. Tall be small when I call small. Small be tall when I call tall. I think I can remember that. And she hurried back to poor Mr. Tall. Looking up at him and waving the wizard's wand, she cried, Tall be small when I call small. My, my. Mr. Tall suddenly shrank in front of her very eyes. It worked! It worked! The spell has worked! Mr. Tall found it much easier to get to his feet again. Thank you. Now would you make me tall again, please? Mm? Squeaked Mr. Tall. But as Miss Helpful was trying to remember the other half of the spell, who should come along but Mr. Small? Uh, Mr. Small, meet Mr. Tall. <laughs> tall, my foot, lady! Why, he's just as small as I am! Oh, dear. Let, let me, um, hold, hang on a second. Uh, I got it. Tall be small and small be tall. Oh, no, that, no, 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 no. Hold on a sec. Uh, um, uh, small be tall and all that better be all. No, no, hold on a sec. Um, uh, <laughs> well, um, um, small be tall. No, small be tall when I call fall. <laughs> well, uh, yes, uh, now you know what I mean about people like Miss Helpful. For instance, last year, Mr. Happy woke up not feeling very well. The doctor had to be called to Mr. Happy's house, which is on a hill by a lake. Oh, dear, said the doctor when he saw Mr. Happy. Looks like measles. Mr. Happy's face fell. Now you're going to stay tucked up nice and warm in bed and get lots of rest. Take this medicine three times a day, hmm? The doctor left the cottage and Mr. Happy settled down to sleep. He had just fallen asleep when there was a loud knock at his front door. Oh dear, oh dear, oh, groaned Mr. Happy. Then he got up and opened the door. Hello there, I've come to help. But, lurk. But nothing. Now off to bed while I get on with everything. Miss Helpful looked around the cottage. This place needs a good cleaning. Mr. Happy had just dropped off to sleep again when Miss Helpful poked her head in his bedroom door. Hey there, you got a scrubbing brush? Oh dear, oh. Poor Mr. Happy. He had to get up and show her where it was. And then he went back to bed to try to sleep. Downstairs, Miss Helpful stepped back to admire the kitchen floor she had just scrubbed and slipped on the sofa. Oh, no. And she fell head over heels and got a head stuck in the bucket. And because she couldn't see where she was going, she walked into a shelf full of pots and pans, which fell all over the floor with a terrible clatter. And because she couldn't see where she was going, Little Miss Helpful stepped into a pot and got it stuck on her foot. And because she had to hop, she fell over against the refrigerator door, which fell open, and everything inside fell out all over Little Miss Helpful. Poor Mr. Happy awoke with a jump at the terrible commotion. He groaned and got out of bed. He went to the kitchen and opened the door and couldn't believe his eyes. There in the middle of a pile of broken eggs and a scrubbing brush and rolling pots and pans and a lot of water, spilt milk, squashed butter and a piece of soap sat little Miss Helpful with a bucket on her head and a gravy pot on her foot. Help! Mr. Happy! Somebody turn off the lights! Mr. Happy grabbed the bucket and pulled as hard as ever. And pulled and pulled! Pop! The bucket came off the top of Little Miss Helpful's head like a cork out of a champagne bottle. Mr. Happy shot backwards like a bullet from a snub-nosed 38. Crash! He went flying through the kitchen door and shot across the garden and straight through his garden hedge. And he rolled down the hilly field behind his garden, faster and faster. And splash! He landed in the lake. And there he sat with a bucket on his head. And a little figure with a gravy pot on one foot came running actually half hopping out of Mr. Happy's house and down towards the lake. Hey there, Mr. Happy. Can I help you any? Sometimes in sunshine, sometimes in style. Sometimes with no time or just with a smile.
One Monday morning, little Miss Bossy went for a walk, and she met Mr. Chatterbox. Good morning, Miss Bossy. What a nice sunny day it is today, although it's not as nice as it was yesterday, but yesterday wasn't quite as good as last weekend. But then I don't do very much on weekends, except, of course, this weekend, which, as you know, is my birthday, and that's why I'm off to the village this morning to make sure everyone is coming to my birthday party. Uh, where are you going today? Mind your own business. On Tuesday, she met Mr. Noisy. He was in his garden singing. Noisily, of course. Stop that frightful noise! Shut up! On Wednesday, little Miss Bossy met Miss Sunshine. And Miss Sunshine was wearing a beautiful smile as usual. What a beautiful hat you're wearing, Miss Bossy. Is it a new one? It does suit you. Miss Sunshine smiled a great big smile. Shut up and take that stupid smile off your face, you silly twerp. Well, as you can imagine, little Miss Bossy wasn't very popular. Now, little did Miss Bossy realize, but somebody had seen her bossing Mr. Chatterbox around. And that same somebody had seen her bossing Mr. Noisy around. And that self-same somebody had seen her bossing Miss Sunshine around. And that self-same somebody was the wizard. He walked home, thinking deeply. Yes, uh, um, um, uh, uh, something really ought to be done about Miss Bossy. When the wizard arrived home, he went straight to his library and took down a large red book from the bookshelf. It was more than a little dusty, as it hadn't been read for some time. <laughs> now, let's see now. Uh, yes, uh, um, uh, where is that spell I need? He turned to page 304. The title of the chapter he had chosen began, How to Stop People from Being Bossy. How to Stop People from Being Bossy. Yes, yes, that's it. The wizard read every page very carefully. The day after, which was Thursday, Little Miss Bossy met some fast asleep. Yes, as usual, Mr. Lazy. <laughs> Come on, wake up! Hey, what's up? What's up, huh? Who wants me? Uh, oh, it's you, Miss Bossy. Oh, I was having such a nice dream. Behind Miss Bossy, the wizard, who had been following her, said something too, under his breath. A wizardly word he'd learned from page 304. And do you know what happened? Suddenly, as if by magic, which is true, there appeared on Miss Bossy's feet a pair of boots. Miss Bossy looked down in alarm. They were magic boots. And being magic boots, they could speak to each other. Hello, left. Hello, right. Ready when you are. Right. Left, right, 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 Faster and faster, marching poor little Miss Bossy along. Little Miss Bossy couldn't do a thing about it. Well done, wizard. The wizard winked a wizardly wink. Those boots marched little Miss Bossy for five miles. She was exhausted. Oh, this is an outrage. Company, ready, halt! And they came to a halt. Along came the wizard. Ah, yes. Uh, those are only for people who are, uh, <laughs> too bossy. Real funny, conehead. Make them go away right now. She said angrily and stamped her foot. Well, at least she tried to stamp her foot, but the boots wouldn't stamp. We're out of stamps. We're right out of stamps. <laughs> yep, we sure are out of stamps. You will do as I say. Stop marching around. Ready when you are. I'm ready. Quick march. Right. Left. Right. Left. Right. Left. Right. Left. For ten more miles they marched, Miss Bossy. Ten miles. Then they marched back to the wizard. Make these stupid boots stop walking. <laughs> yes, only if you say the magic word. <laughs> Miss Bossy thought, and thought, and thought again. Please, 
Yes, <laughs> yes, that's better. And he said the wizardly word again under Malachi his breath from page 304. The boots disappeared as if by magic. Now then, stop being bossy or you know what will happen to you, uh, don't you? Miss Bossy was just about to say something, bossy no doubt, when she stopped, looked down at her feet, and then she finally nodded. There now, uh, 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 you remember what I said? And he disappeared. And do you know something? From that moment on, little Miss Bossy was a changed person. She wasn't bossy at all anymore. And you know why, don't you? Do you know what she's afraid of? Little Miss Bossy is afraid of Bossy Boots. Left, right, 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 left, right. Some breakfast. 
She shook some cornflakes out of a box, but being such a scatterbrain... Oh! She forgot to put a bowl underneath. Oh, silly me. Where'd I put the milk? It took her 15 minutes to find it. Oh, In the oops, silly me. After breakfast, little Miss Scatterbrain set off to town to go shopping. First, she went to the bank. Good morning, Miss Scatterbrain, and how may we help you? Good morning. I'd like some, uh... uh yes, um, uh, uh... Um, um... Some, uh... Mm, money. Sausages. Sausages? But this isn't the butchers. This is the bank. Oh, silly me. I was forgetting. I do sometimes, you know. Really? I'd like two, please. Right. Yes. The bank manager passed two dollars over the counter. Little Miss Scatterbrain slowly looked at them and said, What are these? Two mm, dollars. They don't look much like sausages to me. Well, eventually the bank manager managed to explain, and off went Miss Scatterbrain to the butcher. Phew, that Miss Scatterbrain, she never knows what she wants. She's nothing but trouble. She orders sausages from the bank. Little Miss Scatterbrain walked down the busy street. She went into the butcher shop. Good morning, ma'am, said Percy Pork the butcher. Good afternoon, Mr. Beef. Pork. Sausages. But my name isn't Sausages. Of course not. That's what I'm here for. Oh, what sort? Uh, what do you suggest? Uh, beef. I thought you said your name was Pork. Percy Pork sighed a deep sigh. Hmm, oh, uh, uh, just, uh, call me, uh, Percy. Well, eventually, after a little more confusion, little Miss Scatterbrain managed to buy her two pounds of beef sausages, and Percy Pork wrapped them up for her. Ah, looks like snow. He said, trying to make conversation while looking out of his shop window. Oh, really? Said Miss Scatterbrain, looking at the brown paper parcel. Looks like sausages to me. <laughs> Snow, what a funny man. <laughs> uh, goodbye, Miss uh, Scatterbrain. Uh, good night, Mr. Beef. Miss Scatterbrain left the shop to catch the bus home. She stood behind Mr. Silly at the bus stop. Then along came Mr. Nosy, and he stood behind her and looked nosily at the package that she was holding. Hello. Looks like sausages. Oh? Little Miss Scatterbrain looked up at the sky. No. Looks more like snow to me. Sometimes in sunshine, sometimes in style. Sometimes with no time or just with a smile. Up to her eyes in surprises and tricks. No disguising, she's a Miss Neat lived in Tidy Cottage. It was called Tidy Cottage because she kept it neat and tidy. Little Miss Neat was a very tidy person, probably the tidiest person in all the world. She couldn't stand a mess. And so she was always scrubbing and dusting and running the vacuum cleaner. Oh, I do like to see things neat and tidy, spick and span, if you know what I mean. She spent every day polishing and dusting and cleaning and making sure that everything was in its proper place. I do like to see things in their proper place. One morning, little Miss Need awoke in her bedroom in Tidy Cottage and looked out of her bedroom window. It had been raining during the night and there was a puddle in the middle of her garden path. She gasped in horror. Oh, that's so nasty. And rushed outside with her dust rag. Oh, no, no. Oh, this just will not do. She mopped up every drop of the puddle, and then she rushed inside and washed the duster, and then she ironed the duster, and then she folded the duster, and she placed the duster very neatly back into its drawer. Everything in Tidy Cottage had its proper place. I do like to see things put into their proper places. Now this story is about the time Little Miss Neat went on vacation. 
She always went away for one week every summer, and this year was no different. But do you know, she spent two weeks packing and then spent the whole day polishing her suitcase? Neat and tidy, clean and shiny, that's how things should be. At last, she was ready to leave Tidy Cottage, all spick and span, neat and tidy. Oh, I hope it doesn't get too dusty while I'm away, she said as she closed the door behind her. But something worse than getting dusty was going to happen to Tidy Cottage. Now, last week, Mr. Muddle had written to Miss Neat to tell her he was coming to see her. But being Mr. Muddle, he got into a muddle mailing the letter. Actually, what happened was, when Mr. Muddle went to mail the letter, he had a letter in one hand and a half-eaten cheese sandwich in the other. And you can guess what happened, can't you? That's right. He mailed the sandwich. A mailed cheese sandwich. Oh, yes. <laughs> It'll be nice seeing uh, uh, Miss Neat again. <laughs> he chuckled to himself as he walked home. Mm, uh, mm, yeah, this uh, sandwich is a bit uh, chewy. Oh, mm. It was the day after Miss Neat left that Mr. Muddle arrived and knocked on the door. There was no reply. Uh, mm, bye, he shouted. Then he realized he should have said hello. Hello? You see, he isn't called Mr. Muddle for nothing. Nobody home? He called. He pushed open the door. Oh, dear. He thought as he looked around. Uh, nobody home? Never mind. Uh, I'll just make myself a cup of hot chocolate and wait for Miss Neat. So he went into the kitchen of Tidy mm. Cottage and made himself a cup of hot chocolate. Mm. And waited. Mm. And waited. And waited some more. I think I'll have another uh, mm, chocolate. Now, where in the world did I put that pot? Um, where did I put the chocolate? Where did I put the milk? Where did I put the sugar? Where did I put the spoon? By the time he got to drink the hot chocolate, it was getting dark and time to go home. One week later, a taxi arrived outside Tidy Cottage. Here we are, miss. Home sweet home, said the taxi driver. That was a lovely vacation, but I'm glad to be home. I'm gasping for a cup of chocolate. She walked up the path. Thank you. Goodbye. Miss Neat went through the front door and looked around. Not too dusty. I think I'll make that nice cup of chocolate I promised myself before I start unpacking and tidying. But making a cup of chocolate after a Mr. Muddle visit isn't quite as easy as it sounds. Little Miss Neat eventually found the pot, not in its proper place. In the refrigerator? And she eventually found the milk, not in its proper place. In the teapot. And the chocolate. In the sugar bowl. And the sugar. In the milk jug. And a cup. In the oven. And a saucer. In the bread box. But could she find a teaspoon? I can't find a teaspoon. She could not. The telephone rang. Little Miss Neat picked it up. Hello, Miss Neat here. At the end of the line, Mr. Muddle suddenly realized he was holding the telephone oh. the wrong way around. So he turned it the oh. right way Oh, uh, goodbye. He began. Who is this speaking? Uh, well, it's you, replied Mr. Muddle. Miss Neat thought for a moment. Oh, it's Mr. Muddle speaking, isn't it? Mm, uh, well, yes, replied Mr. Muddle, getting it right for once. And you paid me a visit while I was on vacation, didn't you? Mm, uh, mm, yes, I did. Replied Mr. Muddle, getting it right for twice. Uh, can, uh, can I come and see uh, you now that you're uh, back from um, um, vacation? I suppose so. Goodbye. Uh, right. Hello. Hello, said Mr. Muddle, and put the phone down. Little Miss Neat sighed a heavy sigh. <sighs> and sat down in the armchair next to the phone. Oh! oh she looked underneath the cushion, and there oh. were all her knives and forks. Oh. oh, my. I don't think little Miss Neat will be taking a vacation next year. Do you?
Welcome to Misery Land. I say welcome, but there really isn't much to welcome here. It's the most miserable place on Earth. Misery Land worms look like this. And when the birds wake up in the morning, in Misery Land, they don't sing. They just, they just start crying and they keep it up all day. Oh, I tell you, Misery Land is really the most terrible, awful place. And the king of Misery Land? He's even worse. He sits on his throne all day long in total misery. Oh, oh, I'm, I'm so unhappy. Oh, oh dear. Oh, oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> now, little Miss Sunshine had been on vacation. She had a lovely time and was now driving home. She was singing happily to herself as she drove along. Then, out of the corner of her eye, she saw a signpost. It said, to Misery Land. Misery Land? I never heard of that place before. I'll eat lunch there. And she drove off down the lane marked, to Misery Land. After a while, she came to another much larger sign which read, No smiling, no laughing, no chuckling, giggling forbidden, by order of the king. Miss Sunshine was shocked. Oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> she came to the door of the castle. A soldier held up his hand and stopped her. What do you want here, young lady? <laughs> I want to see the king. I'm warning you, laughter is not allowed here. Stop that giggling. All right, you're under arrest, ordered the soldier grimly. What for? Why am I under arrest? I only just arrived in Misery Land. You're under arrest for a most serious crime. Most serious indeed. Now then, you'll come with me at once. Do you hear? The soldier sadly marched Little Miss Sunshine through the monstrous door and across a courtyard. And then they went through another huge door and walked up an enormous carpeted staircase. From there, they went along a long, long corridor and through another huge door and entered into a gigantic room. And at the end of this gigantic room sat the king. He was moaning and sighing as sad as could be. Oh, oh dear, oh dear, oh, oh. Your Highness, I have arrested this person for a very serious crime. Uh, what, 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 uh, 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 what crime? Well, she smiled at me, your highness. She, she, she did what? She, she smiled at me. But why on earth is smiling not allowed? <laughs> and, 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 and she's, she's laughing at me too. <laughs> why not? <laughs> she... She chuckled. She chuckled at me. She, she giggled, too. And the king burst into tears. Oh, oh, oh. oh for heaven's sake, my goodness. <laughs> this sort of thing is just not allowed. But why are all these things not allowed? Because, be, because this is misery land. And, uh, and, and, and they have never been allowed. Oh, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh, I was so unhappy before you arrived, but now I'm twice as unhappy. <laughs> but wouldn't you really like to be happy? Oh, of course I would. But how can I be? Th th this is misery land. Little Miss Sunshine thought for a moment. Come with me. You, you, you can't talk to me like that. Ah, um... uh, don't be silly. Come on. And she led him across the gigantic room and through the huge door to where her car was parked. Get in. She said. Little Miss Sunshine drove the crying king back to the large sign. Dry your eyes. She handed him a handkerchief from her handbag. Then she produced a large pen. Five minutes later, she was finished. There. Now you can be happy. You are now entering Laughterland. Smiling, laughing, chuckling, giggling are permitted by order of the king. But, 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 uh, I, I, I don't know how to be happy. I, I've never, I've, I've never tried it. Oh, it's really very easy. Just do this. She 
smiled a great big smile. Then the king tried to smile too. That's not bad. Try this. <laughs> and she gave a little chuckle. And then the king tried to chuckle. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting better. Then she giggled. <laughs> and then the king giggled. <laughs> you got it. And then she laughed. <laughs> so, 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 so I have. <laughs> Sunshine arrived home. There was Mr. Happy out for an evening stroll. Hello. <laughs> Where you been? Misery Land. <laughs> Misery Land? I didn't know there was such a place. <laughs> Actually, there isn't. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> One Friday evening, the telephone rang in Early Bird Cottage. Little Miss Late picked it right up. Hi, Miss Late speaking. <laughs> uh, hello, uh, Mr. Silly here. <laughs> I've been given some um, uh, tickets for, uh, uh, what do you call it, a disco tomorrow night. Uh, would, you, uh, would you like to come? <laughs> That's right! What a wonderful idea! Right! I I'll uh, <laughs> meet you at um, uh, 7 o'clock outside the disco. See you tomorrow! Bye! And she put the phone down. Now, Saturday arrived and Mr. Silly waited outside the disco. He waited. And waited. And waited some more. Poor Mr. Silly went home. The next day, Mr. Silly went to see Miss Late. After a while, after a long while, she opened the door. Hi, Mr. Silly. I thought we were going to meet outside the disco. Oh, oh. Late for this, late for that. Miss Slate was late for everything. For instance, last year, do you know when she celebrated Christmas Day? January the 25th, exactly one month late. Merry Christmas! Uh-oh! Sorry! For example, do you know when she did her spring cleaning at Early Bird Cottage? In the summer, three months later. Hi! Happy Easter! Uh-oh! Sorry! And for instance, do you have any idea when she went on her summer vacation last year? In the winter! In December! In the snow! This time, six months late. Mmm. 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 Hi. Wish you were here. Mmm. Mmm. Uh oh. Sorry. Now, just along the road, almost next door, was Tidy Cottage, where a friend of hers lived, Little Miss Neat. Little Miss Neat had decided that afternoon to go for a walk. As she came to Early Bird Cottage, she noticed Miss Late in the garden up to her ears in uncut grass. She called over the fence to her. Hello, what are you doing? I thought I'd cut the grass. But Miss Neat had a better idea. I think that you should have thought about that months ago. I tell you what, let's go shopping together, hmm? Oh, great idea. I'll meet you in town on the corner of Main Street tomorrow afternoon, two o'clock. All right. I'll be there. The following afternoon, 
Little Miss Neat stood on the corner of Main Street. It was two o'clock, and she was waiting for Miss Late. <sighs> and she waited, mm. and waited, and mm. waited some more. Mr. Topsy Turvy <gasps> walked past, backwards, of course. Oh. Afternoon, good. Finally, Miss Late arrived. Hi! I'm a little bit late, I'm afraid. A bit late. It's five o'clock already, and all the stores have closed. Ooh, ooh. Sorry. And that's what happened all the time. It happened when Miss Late decided to get a job. Her first job was in a bank. But the trouble was, by the time she ah. arrived for work, oh. the bank had closed. Sorry. And that was the end of her first job. Now, her second job was as a waitress in a restaurant. Mr. Greedy was in for lunch, and he glanced at the menu. Oh, uh, yes, um, um, oh, I'll have everything, um, twice, um, with cookies. <laughs> he was still waiting to be served at seven o'clock that evening, so he went home. Sorry. And that was the end of her second job. Now, her third job was working as a secretary for Mr. Uppity. Yes? Miss Late, I'd like these letters typed before you go home tonight. It was four o'clock in the morning when Miss Late finally said... Finished! Hmm, you certainly are. Sorry. Ooh. And that was the end of her third job. But now at last, Miss Late has managed to find herself the perfect job. She now works for Mr. Lazy, cleaning his house and cooking his meals. And Little Miss Late, being Little Miss Late, is always late for work. So she doesn't arrive for work in the morning. She arrives as Mr. Lazy gets up. Mm -hmm. Oh, Miss Late. <coughs> oh. Mm -hmm. oh, good afternoon. <coughs> And Mr. Lazy, being Mr. Lazy, doesn't have breakfast in the morning like you or I do. He has breakfast in the evening. Right. And so, you see, it all works out very well. In fact, perfectly. Because Miss Late thinks this is perfectly normal. Mr. Lazy! Mm -hmm. Breakfast! Mm -hmm. Uh-oh! Nothing was too good for Little Miss Splendid. She lived in a huge house, surrounded by large gardens. She bathed in a gold bathtub, and she dined off silver plates. Oh, she was splendid. At least, she thought so. Soup, my lady? Said the butler. No, just caviar today, Hargreaves. Very well, my lady. Little Miss Splendid thought a lot of herself. In fact, she thought about nothing else. Good morning, ma'am, said the house guard. Good morning, um, uh... Hard well, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am, said the gardener. Good morning, um... Casey, ma'am. Casey! Good morning, madam. Uh, will you need your car today? Said the chauffeur. Not today, Williams. That day... While she was taking a stroll around her lovely gardens, Little Miss Splendid came upon a small door in one of the walls. She'd never noticed it before. Now, I wonder what this is. Hmm? Huh? She found herself on a road. Along came Mr. Small out for a short walk. Good morning. Hmm. 
Little Miss Splendid stuck her nose in the air, even higher than she had, and walked past him as if he wasn't there. What a common little man. She came to a bus stop. Mr. Happy and Mr. Daydream were waiting for a bus to take them into town. Hello, who are you? I am Splendid. Oh, I'm Happy. Happy to meet you. And this is my friend, Mr. Daydream. Are you going to catch the bus? Me? The bus? Never. I have never, ever in the whole of my life taken a bus. You have to sit next to people on buses, and that would never do. Ah! Oh, 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 oh. Mr. Happy couldn't think of anything to say to that. Miss Splendid walked off with her nose very high in the air. As you can see, Miss Splendid certainly had a high opinion of herself. And wherever she went, she never saw anything but herself. Miss Splendid arrived in town. She looked at herself in all the shop windows as she walked down the street. Splendid! Splendid! I must say I do look absolutely splendid! Then something caught her eye. It was there in the middle of the window of the hat shop. It was a hat. Not just a hat, but a hat and a half. The most magnificent, sumptuous, desirable, gorgeous, spectacular, amazing, splendid hat you've ever seen. Little Miss Splendid was completely overcome at the thought of owning that hat. Shop! Shop! She snapped her fingers and a sales lady hurried to her side. Good morning, madam. Can I help you? I wish to try on the hat in the window. This one, madam? Yes. Oh, magnificent. I'll take it. Don't bother to wrap it. I'll wear it. And would you care to know how much it costs, ma'am? Costs? Costs? I never discuss money matters. Put it on my account. Thank you, madam. Goodbye. Little Miss Splendid stood on the pavement and held up her hand. Taxi! Taxi! Take me home. Little Miss Splendid went to get in the taxi. But of course, she couldn't. Her new hat was much too large to fit through the door. Driver! You should purchase yourself a larger taxi. In the meantime, I believe I should prefer to walk. All right, please yourself, lady. See ya. Damn all of my And perhaps it is better to walk so that everyone has the chance to admire my magnificent new hat. But then it happened. Something she'd never expected. It started to rain. And the trouble with rain is, the more it starts to rain, the more it rains. And the trouble with this rain was that the more it rained, the more poor Miss Splendid got wet. And the trouble was, the wetter she got, the wetter her hat got. What a sorry sight. I think we'd all agree with that. And since she was far too splendid to take the bus, she was forced to walk all the way home. The bus, on its return trip from town, passed her. Mr. Happy and Mr. Daydream were on their way home and looked out the window. Say, Daydream, haven't we seen that drip around here before? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Splendid, looking anything but splendid, arrived home. However, after a hot bath in her gold bathtub, and after a boiled egg in her gold egg cup, eaten with a silver spoon, of course, she felt much better. In fact, later on she spent an extremely pleasant evening looking at... Well now, what do you think she spent all evening looking at? No, not a magazine. Uh-uh, not television, not a book. Splendid. But herself. Splendid. In the mirror. Splendid. Oh, I do look splendid.
I'll bet you have, once or twice. Well, little Miss Naughty was naughty all the time. She awoke one Sunday morning, bright and early, and looked out of her window. Looks like a nice day for being naughty. <gasps> now that particular Sunday, Mr. Uppity was out for his morning stroll. I'm going to knock his hat off. <gasps> From behind a wall, Miss Naughty knocked Mr. Uppity's hat off his head with a walking stick. My hat! <laughs> that same day, Mr. Greedy had put a turkey in the oven for lunch. A rather large turkey. Sure beats eating a TV dinner. I'm going to steal it. <laughs> oh, no. Who's that at the door just when I'm about to eat my uh, delicious lunch? Well, I'll answer it. Oh, no. Nobody's there. We're back to lunch. Oh, no. Oh. Poor Mr. Greedy. A sausage isn't much of a lunch when you've been looking forward to a whole turkey, is it? And do you know what Miss Naughty did that evening? She went to an expensive restaurant and ordered all the most expensive food on the menu. I'd like some oysters, caviar, fresh salmon, side order of fries, hold the slaw, T-bone steak, well done, cheesecake, a la mode, and your best bottle of lemonade. <laughs> And then do you know what she did? She sent the bill to Mr. Me, naughty girl. Hmm? <laughs> what a shock! The next day she met Mr. Worry. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Oh, uh, what, uh, what, uh, what is the problem? Looks to me like you got measles. Your face looks like a pizza. Oh <sighs> dear. She worried off to see Dr. Makeup. Well, Dr. Makewell listened to Mr. Worry's tale and took a mirror from his desk. Oh, there's no spots. What a thing to say to me when it wasn't true. Oh, what a lovely day. And it isn't even dinner time yet. <laughs> the city council decided to hold a meeting. Something has to be done, announced Mr. Uppity, holding out his bent hat. And Mr. Greedy thought. Mm, uh, yes, uh, <laughs> He cleared his throat and spoke. I, uh, forgot, uh, what, uh, I was, uh, going to, uh, say. <laughs> well, uh, I know what the little lady needs, and, uh, I know who can do it. Oh, really? Who? Uh, come on, come on, let's have it. Then, wouldn't it? Mr. Worry went to see a friend of his, someone who could do impossible things, like making himself invisible. Meanwhile, that afternoon, while Mr. Nosy was asleep under a tree, little Miss Naughty crept towards him with a pot of paint in one hand, a paintbrush in the other, and a large grin on her face. <sighs> I'm going to paint his nose red. <laughs> but just as she was about to do the dreadful deed, something happened. The brush jumped out of her hand, then it dipped itself into the red paint and began to chase Miss Naughty down the road. Oh, no! Stop! Help! Help! Somebody was holding the pot and brush. I wonder who. Mr. Jelly was waiting for a bus all alone when, behind his back, little Miss Naughty crept up quietly. She had a balloon in one hand and a pin in the other. Oh, she couldn't do that to poor, nervous Mr. Jelly, could she? Of course she could. <laughs> He'll really jump when this balloon goes bang. But just as she was about to make the balloon go bang, something happened. The balloon began to grow larger and larger as some invisible person blew air into it. Slowly. Miss Naughty began to hey! lift off the ground. Help! Help! Put me down! Put me down! Put me down! She sailed away, up and over the trees. May have sailed on forever if the balloon hadn't found the ground. Poor Miss Naughty, she fell into a dump. <laughs> the next day, Mr. Lazy was in bed, fast asleep. Outside his house, 
Little Miss Naughty stood by the front door. She raised her hand. Uh-oh, she couldn't be so naughty as to knock on that door and wake up poor Mr. Lazy. Not at six o'clock in the morning. She couldn't. Oh, yes, she could. <laughs> oh, won't it make him angry waking him up this early? <sighs> but just before she did, guess what? That naughty girl felt someone who was invisible tweak her nose hard. Oh, ouch! Oh, ouch! Oh, stop it! Now get off! It's not fair! And little Miss Naughty ran home holding her nose. After that, she was cured. No more naughtiness at all. The next day, Mr. Worry went to thank his invisible friend. Uh, good morning, Mr. Impossible. Thank you very much for helping me to cure poor little Miss Naughty of naughtiness. My pleasure. <laughs> but it uh, did take a week. <laughs> yes, indeed. And a tweak? <laughs> Plump certainly was. What? Plump. She was as plump as a cushion. <coughs> she lived in Cherry Cake Cottage. Now, one lovely summer morning, she arrived home from an early morning walk. Feeling rather hungry, she went into her kitchen. And she cooked herself some breakfast. Some breakfast indeed. Sausages. Now, if you had sausages for breakfast, how many sausages would you have? One, maybe two. If you were a chow hound, maybe three. Guess how many sausages Miss Plump had for breakfast? Sixty-six! Sixty-six succulent, sizzling sausages, which is difficult to say. No, it isn't. Sixty-six. Sixty-six. Oh, sixty-six succulent, sizzling sausages. <laughs> and even more difficult to eat. No, it isn't. Miss Plump cut the last sausage in her plate in two and popped one half into her mouth. Mm -hmm. It's good. Now what will I have? Guess what? Toast. Now, if you had toast for breakfast, or if I had toast for breakfast, how many slices would we have? One, two, three. Guess how many slices of toast Miss Plump had for breakfast? Give up. Twenty-three. Twenty-three thick, tasty slices of tempting toast and jelly. Mmm, that was nice. Just as Miss Plump was licking the last crumb of the twenty-third slice of toast from her lips, there was a knock at the door of Cherry Cake Cottage. And there stood the mailman. Morning, Mr. Stab. Good morning, Miss Plump. I've got a letter for you. Good. Would you like a cup of tea while you're here? I'm going to have one. Oh, thank you. I'd love one. One? Fat chance. Just look at the size of Miss Plum's teapot. It won't be long. The kettle is just boiled. Sugar, Mr. Stab? Uh, just one lump, Miss Plump. Uh, thank you. Oh, that's nice. I just love a good cup of tea. So do I. Especially with a nice big plate of chocolate cake and ice yeah, cream. Yeah, such a day. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, beautiful. We're having a fine summer. Thank you for the tea. I must be on my way. Ah, uh, don't get up. I'll see myself out. Bye, Mr. Stamp. After Miss Plump had said goodbye to the mailman, she poured herself another cup of tea. Another. After the eleven other cups she already had. And then she opened the letter. It was for Mr. Greedy. Dear Miss Plump, next Wednesday is my birthday. Please come and see me at four o'clock. Signed, Mr. Greedy. 
Oh, good. I look forward to that. Wednesday was a beautiful, sunny day. I think I'll wear my new hat. Oh, dear. Oh, that's better. After a light lunch, and you'll find out what that was later, Miss Plump set off in her car to drive over to Mr. Greedy's. Ooh, I, I must get a bigger car. But before she set off, she put something on the back seat of her car. Something large. It was Mr. Greedy's birthday present. Now what's wrong with you? On the dot, Miss Plump pulled up in front of Mr. Greedy's roly-poly sort of house. Hello, Mr. Greedy. Oh, hello, Miss Plump. Happy birthday, Mr. Greedy. Oh, do come in. Everything is ready. Oh, it's nice to see you again. Oh, Miss Plump, you look charming. Oh, what is this? Not a gift. It's your birthday present. Oh, not really. Mm. And he started pulling off the wrapping paper. Oh, 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 it's the loveliest cake I have ever seen. I only put one candle on it because I didn't know how old you were. Oh, 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 oh. well, you shouldn't have, Miss Plump, but I'm glad you did. I baked it today. I have a confession to make. Oh. This isn't the only cake I baked today. Mm. The first one was so delicious, I ate it for breakfast. <laughs> yes, I quite understand. And the second one looked so tasty, I ate it for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> and the third, I assume, Miss Plump, is for me. <laughs> Will you join me? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Oh, oh, look! Oh, ham and cheese! Milkshakes! Oh, dirty ice cream! Sandwiches! Buns! Jams! Tarts! Oh, I can't wait to taste the cake! Oh, could you pass the cookies and ice cream? Oh, 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 this is wonderful! Oh, look at it! Oh, oh, I love this! Oh, this is so wonderful! Oh, I can't wait! because Ginger, the big farm cat, had chased them all away. Now, the trouble was, because she was so tiny, nobody even knew she lived there. Nobody noticed her, not even the farmer and his wife. She didn't even get junk mail from supermarkets. So there she lived, all alone, and she was lonely oh, and sad. I wish I had someone to talk to. One day, she was feeling so lonely, she decided to be very brave and go for a walk. Out of her mouse hole she came. She crept across the dining room and went through the crack in the door and into the hall. To little Miss Tiny, the hall looked as big as a football field. Oh my goodness! And she scurried across it to the back door of the farmhouse. Luckily for her, the cat flap at the bottom of the door was open and she squeezed herself through it and out onto the doorstep. It was all very exciting. 
There before her was the vast expanse of the farmyard, so she set out to explore it. As little Miss Tiny walked across the yard, she came upon a hole. Suddenly, out Ooh. popped a worm. Morning! See any birds around? Oh my goodness, it's a monster! Little Miss Tiny was terrified. She ran across the farmyard to hide, and she came to a door with a gap at the bottom and ducked in underneath. There inside was someone snorting and breathing very heavily. It was a pig, a large pig. And if you're as small as little Miss Tiny is, a pig looks very large indeed. Miss Tiny looked at the pig, and the pig looked at Miss Tiny. The pig grunted and moved closer to inspect the little person who had entered the sty. Oh, my goodness, mercy! And Miss Tiny shot out of the pigsty as fast as her little legs could carry her, which wasn't very fast because her legs were so small. She stopped to catch her breath. Oh, oh, my goodness, I can't stop the knocking of my knees! Oh, oh. When she recovered her breath, she climbed up on a large stone to see if the pig had followed her. Fortunately, it hadn't. Thank goodness for that! But suddenly, the stone began to move! Oh no, no! For heaven's sakes, what's happening now? Hey you! Get off my back! It was only a harmless old snail. Little Miss Tiny jumped down and ran across the farmyard. She ran around to the back of the pigsty before she stopped. She leaned against the wall and put her hands over her eyes. Suddenly, she heard a noise. A very close sort of noise. A sort of licking noise, which sounded an awful lot like broken windshield wipers, which scared her even more. Oh! What's that? She hardly dared to take her hands away from her eyes, but when she did, she wished she hadn't. What do you think it was? There, right in front of her, looking at her with green eyes, was Ginger. Not the snaps, but the farm cat. Poor little Miss Tiny. Ginger grinned from ear to ear and showed Miss Tiny her sharp white teeth. Help! Oh! Somebody please help me! Well, it looked like curtains for little Miss Tiny. She shouted at the top of her voice. The trouble was, the top of her voice was not very loud. Ginger grinned another grin. Every day, Mr. Strong went out to gather some eggs. He loved eggs. Lots of them. That day, he was walking back across the farmyard when he heard a very tiny squeak. Yeah. At first, he thought he had stepped on a cricket. But then there it was again. It was coming from around the corner. He looked around the corner and saw Ginger and Little Miss Tiny. Help! Help! Please help me! <laughs> so come on now, scram, little cat. Mr. Strong gently picked up Little Miss Tiny, very gently. Hmm, hello, who are you? I'm, I'm, I'm Miss Tiny. You really are, aren't you? Well, if I was as tiny as you, I wouldn't go wandering around large farmyards. But I'm so lonely, I wanted to find somebody to talk to. I understand. Well, let's see if we can't find you some friends to talk to. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. And now, every day, Mr. Strong collects little Miss Tiny and takes her off to see her friends. Three days ago, he took her to see Mr. Funny, who told her so many jokes, she just couldn't stop laughing all day. Two days ago, he took her to see Mr. Greedy. Mr. Greedy told her his special recipe for his favorite breakfast. Um, uh, toast, two slices, cornflakes, one whole box, milk, one bottle, sugar, one bowl, ham, three slices, eggs, four, boiled, of course, soft, ten sausages, uh, butter, one pound, marmalade, one pot, and a box of cupcakes. But that's too much for tiny little me. I couldn't possibly eat all that. Well, uh, for you, uh, divide by a hundred. Yesterday, Mr. Strong took her to see Mr. Silly. And while they were there, Mr. Silly showed her how you stand on your head. That's very silly! Oh, yes. Uh, well, uh, thank you. <laughs> and guess who she met today? 
someone who's become a special little friend, Mr. Small. I never thought I'd ever meet anybody smaller than myself. Just you wait till I grow up. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Oh, that's really good. Very good. <laughs> shy just couldn't help it uh being shy that is she lived all alone in a little house quite a long way from where you live in fact quite a long way from where anybody lives in fact it was completely surrounded by a high brick fence the name of her little house was thimble cottage little <gasps> for miss shy <gasps> little miss shy <gasps> slipped under the table in terror the mailman outside knocked again Little Miss Shy, staying hidden under the table, put her hands over her ears and closed her eyes, trembling fearfully. Anybody home? Mm, uh, mm, uh, anybody home? Well, I guess not. She must be out. The mailman pushed the letter he was carrying through the door and walked away. Little Miss Shy waited and waited and waited until the sound of his footsteps had died away. And then she waited some more. In fact, she spent most of that day under her kitchen table. It was dark by the time little Miss Shy dared to come out. And there it was on the doormat, the very first letter she'd gotten in her whole life. She opened it very cautiously. Oh, it's from Mr. Funny. You are invited, wrote Mr. Funny, to a party on Saturday at three o'clock. It's going to be fun, fun, and more fun. Oh, Little Miss Shy was horrified. Fun. She looked at the letter one more time. I can't go. I can't. There'll be people there. <gasps> people. In the whole wide world, there was absolutely nothing that frightened Miss Shy as much as the thought of people. She worried about it all night long. But the following morning, she made a decision. I'll have to go. It wouldn't be polite to refuse. But five minutes later, she changed her mind. Oh, I have to refuse. And five minutes later, she changed her mind back again. <gasps> I have to go. Oh, I simply can't go. That's right. She didn't sleep that night at all. The next day was Friday. Miss Shia woke with a smile. She was going to the party. Yes. I'm... I'm going. Yes, I really am. I really decided that I am going. And that Friday, little Miss Shia changed her mind 144 times. That's how many five-minute intervals there are in a day. She was going to the park. She wasn't going. She was. She wasn't. She was. She wasn't. She was. Oh, gosh, it was a very long day. And that, that Friday night was even worse than Thursday night. She didn't sleep a wink, not even a half a wink. Saturday morning came and went. Saturday lunchtime came and went. Little Miss Shy just couldn't I eat a thing. Eat. One o'clock in the afternoon came and went. Two o'clock in the afternoon came and went, and then three o'clock, the party oh, time dear. came and went. But poor little Miss Shy didn't. I can't. She couldn't. She just I sat there. Go. A tear rolled down her <laughs> cheek. Oh, I wish I'd gone. I wish I'd gone. Four o'clock came. Uh, there was a loud knock at the door. The door opened and he walked <laughs> Mr. Funny. I knew you wouldn't come, so, so, I've come to take you to the party. <laughs> Little Miss oh, Shy blushed and blushed and couldn't. blushed. I mean, I mean, really. I, come I on now, dear. 
Come on, you'll enjoy it once you're there. <laughs> Come on now, let's go. And he marched the blushing little lady off to his party. Everybody was there. Come to a party. Come to a dance. Come out and play with us. Just take a chance. Little Michelle, you seem so afraid. Try it before it's too late. Um, have some cake, said Mr. Green. Thank you. You're so kind. Mr. Tickle offered her not one but two glasses of lemonade, uh, oh. in a roundabout sort of way. Mr. Mischief made her jump with a noisy party squeaker, and she dropped her lemonade oh. all over poor Mr. Oh. Snow. Sorry. She apologized. Oh, dear, you've got no wet. Oh, no, 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 don't mention it. Mr. Dizzy gave her a lovely party hat, and Miss Shy began to feel better. Everybody talked to her. And everybody was very nice and gradual. The longer the party lasted, bit by bit, little by little, eventually, guess what happened? She stopped blushing. And little Miss Shy actually began to enjoy herself. Told you. <laughs> you see, it's quite harmless once you let yourself go. I am glad you decided to do that because it makes you very happy. Quite painless once you get used to it. <laughs> You're not shy at all. <laughs> Little Miss Shy nodded and giggled. She was having the time of her life and only blushing a bit. And do you know who she met at the party? Mr. Quiet. Uh, I, I uh, used to be shy like you. <laughs> oh, are you? I... Oh, uh, um... Would you... Would you like to yeah, come... Yeah. To Simba Cottage? Me? To see me? Perhaps tomorrow? Visit you? At your house? Oh, uh, well... I, um... <laughs> I... Well, I... Mr. Quiet stammered and blushed like a sack of tomatoes. Mm. And then he fainted. Oh!